I want to welcome to the Steel Report for this week an old friend of mine that I had as a student when I was teaching at the University of Northern Iowa, Ben Haggerty. And Ben is a Cedar Falls native, of course, and uh, he's been in this area for a long time. He's a Cedar Falls High School graduate, a UNI graduate, but he has become a very successful creator of media content out in Los Angeles in recent years. And Ben, you've been doing some projects with some really major entertainment stars. And the reason I wanted to bring your story in, I think it's really a fantastic story of kind of sticking with it, perseverance, being dedicated, not saying no, keeping with it, having that goal high. And uh, I just wanted to first of all tell people a little bit about, or uh, have you tell people of some of the stars that you've worked with here in recent years. I mean, I appreciate that. Uh, this is really cool coming from you because you were my <laughs> teacher at one point and I think I told you I wanted to take your job here at KWWL someday when you asked me what I wanted to do when I grew up. Uh, I don't know, I've been lucky to work with a lot of artists worked with Beyonce and Jay-Z, uh, Chris Brown, Mary J. Blige, a lot of big brands, Dwayne Johnson, so, several people that I used to look up to all the time and then get to work with them is, it's wild, it's crazy. When we talked earlier, you said you were, for many years, you were like a lot of us, we were trying to figure out exactly what we wanted to do with our lives. Then you got a pretty big break in 2016 when you got to go on tour with a rapper from uh, South Central Los Angeles. His name is Quincy Hanley. Yeah. Do you know him as? <laughs> Schoolboy School Q. Q. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And that must have been quite an experience because that turned out to be something very significant in your career, right? To yeah, totally. Um, they, you know, I got connected when I was in Iowa at the time. I got a chance to go down to a South by Southwest festival. I shot for a bunch of random artists down there and someone saw my work and passed it along. And then uh, they were like, we want to take you on the road. And um, it was a big challenge. You know, I had to kind of create a documentary on the road and did like weekly episodes and the fans ended up loving it, the label loved it, and a lot of people started to see that work, and so many artists started reaching mm -hmm. out wanting the same thing, so. Amazing. Yeah, I got lucky. I studied a lot in Iowa before any of that ever happened. Like, mm -hmm. I was putting in the work early, early, just being a fan and absorbing as much content. We talked about it off camera, but we learn every day, and every day it's constantly changing, so the education was key, you know? Top Dog Entertainment. Top dog. Yeah, in fact, uh, Top Dog Entertainment has reached out to you many times. Yeah. Uh, you're a big fan of theirs, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, Top Dog Entertainment, TD. They're, uh, it's a huge label. Kendrick Lamar, SZA, mm -hmm. Schoolboy Q. I mean, all these artists on there I've looked up to in, in music. They're incredible artists. They win awards all the time. And um, we tried, that was my first time getting to tour around the world was with, uh, with Q. And we saw some cool stuff. I saw the Eiffel Tower for the first time because of him. I saw mm -hmm. a lot of places I'd never been before, Australia and things like that. And, but it just opened up incredible doors. It was awesome. So I heard you say on a video, I always say yes because you never know where the opportunity is going to come from in any gig you do. Yep. And you have a great Rihanna photo to prove that, don't you? Yeah. Your research is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it makes me scared just knowing like what you've seen in my work. Uh, yeah, I got like, you know, I, I always say yes. You say yes until you can say no. I just try to like mm -hmm. work as hard as possible. I accepted every job when I first got started because you don't know anybody and no one knows you and you may think you're the greatest, but no one knows your work. So you have to kind of prove yourself. So I took every gig. <laughs> Uh, the Rihanna photo, like I was shooting a show and directing a bunch of camera operators and Rihanna came out on stage, it was a surprise, she was performing with Kendrick Lamar. I took out my camera real quick and just grabbed a few stills and her team ended up remembering those photos and later on requested, years later, they requested those photos to be in her biography book. I have a photo in this book somewhere. This massive book and I have this two page spread in the, in the book. Ooh, it's a full. Full court press photo in there, you heard? It was really cool. I was gonna say, it's not just one photograph of her. I mean, it's a big, Massive. takes up all, both pages. It's a huge it? yeah. book. It's like this yeah. big, pink, <laughs> vibrant book. It's awesome. It so really you, cool. your podcast, a popular podcast, is called Black with No Cream. You're wearing the t-shirt right am. there. So where'd you get the name? And it's really about a community of other creators working collaborative together, right? Yeah, uh, Black with No Cream. That's how I drink my coffee, I'm obsessed. My grandma put me on really early. I hated it when she was alive and uh, ended up loving it later. But uh, yeah, I just drink a lot of coffee when I'm creating and I feel like a lot of other people did too, so I started the name. And uh, I just wanted to build a space that I could bring creatives together, kind of give them a safe haven to feel free to share their work. Early on, it's hard to get people to mm -hmm. respond to your work, but also show and give passion to like what you're working on and give tips and critiques. And uh, I got hit up a lot for those specific requests and I was like, 
maybe I could just bring everyone together. And it's, it's a community that's grown over 8,000 people. Wow. Um, it's been thriving. I meet up with them when I travel. Like I just toured mm -hmm. again and I met with people in Amsterdam, people in South Africa. Like there's Black Widow Cream members all around the world at this point. So it's so cool because you get all these different perspectives mm -hmm. at one time. It's really unique. What do you do to help them? The, the cool thing about Black Widow Cream is not the Ben Haggerty podcast. Like mm -hmm. I know a lot of stuff and I've experienced a lot of stuff, but my, my knowledge only goes so far. And there's mm -hmm. so much I don't know. I've, I'll call people every day on a job be like, hey, what would you do in this instance? And I think that that's like a cool thing to have access to. Like my phone's the bat phone. I can call people and learn a lot really quickly. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't have that luxury. I didn't have that luxury living here. I didn't have that luxury. I was sitting in my, the basement trying to learn how to make videos and stuff and reach out to people and no one would respond. And now I feel like kind of obligated to bring some of the talented people that I've met along the way into one space to share and try to squeeze them for as much juice as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what the podcast is. I interview all these talented creators from all over the place that have done amazing things and try to give that to people who are at the beginning stages, they're trying to learn, or maybe they're way advanced. But like the, the information, like we said, you're always in school. Like I'm constantly learning. Every day I do an interview with someone, they're teaching me something, it's amazing. So I think uh, you know if you wanna hear how to get into the industry and find a way through it, like this is such a good, there's so much power in every episode. I don't even know where to begin, how much gems are buried in it, you know? We'll continue our interview with Ben Haggerty in just a moment. <laughs> Cut it. But what, what do you think sets you apart? Like you say, there's a lot of videographers out there, a lot of creators, yeah. but what is the eye do you think that they see in your work that makes you they want, they want you to come and do the work for them. It's yeah. a great question. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I think from being from Iowa, being raised the way I was raised and the, the giving people respect and the time to do their thing, um, I think just being a good person and, and communication is always key. So I've always just been on top of caring about everyone around me and trying to figure out how I can elevate others. Uh, honestly, that's been the biggest tip is that I always give to people is I got in the room and anytime I see an opportunity to help someone do better at what they're doing, I try to offer that mm -hmm. and in return they come back to me later on, suggest me to someone else because they like the work I did. That's all you can do really is just try to help bring the project to the best it can ever be. You know? Yeah, the word of mouth coming from someone like a Jay-Z would be incredible, <laughs> wouldn't it? I mean, Yeah, yeah. So, Jay once called me the drone god. <laughs> they said I got some skills with my drone. Uh, and I, I play with drawing, it's cameras, I'm obsessed with cameras, I'm obsessed yeah. with technique and, and styles and coming up with new ways of creating and uh, that all, I mean that, that, like you said, is the skill in trying to make sure I've developed, I spent so many years practicing and learning, sitting not, like three blocks behind here, we're mm -hmm. making music, learning how to be artists, trying to develop content, and when you take that and package that 10 plus years of experience and bring it out, mm -hmm. um, you know, nothing can go wrong as long as you're dedicated and you put in the work and try to make quality stuff. Yeah, I mean, everybody has a video camera today, but the fact is not everybody has the eye to see the shot that you're going to see. Dang. I appreciate That's it. That feels awesome. I, I, yeah, mm -hmm. it's tough. But I don't know. I don't know what to say to that. So you always say yes, but then you also say sometimes your projects just don't work out. And that's not a bad thing, though, is it? You know? No. Yeah. I've had plenty of jobs. You think you're going to get a job or someone tells you or promises you something and that thing can go away like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's tough to hear. It's hard to experience it. And um, I've felt it many times. There's multiple projects where it's either some artist that you look up to, you dream about. Honestly, Q's tour. I thought mm -hmm. they promised me that. That thing didn't happen for two more years after they told me they were going to take me on the road. Wow. I thought it was long gone. I was like, man, I got to start all over. I thought that I was going to make it. I was going to be a, become a great filmmaker mm -hmm. and uh, I just kept working really hard and they actually paid attention to what I was doing in the meantime mm -hmm. and when the time came it was it was cool they pulled the trigger it was awesome that's fantastic also I want to mention uh, Ben real verse world what that you had that for a long long <laughs> many years right yeah. so what's that all about <laughs> uh, it's just my Instagram handle I just came, <laughs> Ben real verse world it was honestly because I always like was making music early on we're always working in groups and stuff and everything would always people would go in different directions and I always felt like I was kind of up against a wall by myself and I needed to figure out how to climb over it. And I don't know, I just coined myself Ben Roe vs. World. But like, you know, I moved out to LA by myself and I tried to figure out how to do it by myself. And, and you have to use, there's a huge network involved with the success, but I always felt like I was kind of alone at that time. Uh, but now it's, it's just kind of stuck. So people always twist the name of, what's up Ben Real World? I think I'm like the MTV <laughs> show or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's how I came up with that. So artists, we know how talented they are, but they also seem to have a respect because the videos do make them so much more powerful and so much more popular. Yeah. Do they have the respect for you, do you think, that, uh, that you enjoy? Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Like so many of the artists that I've worked with, like I, you know, you look up to them and like Mary J. Blige is the sweetest person in the world and she's so kind and says, she so, goes out of her way to talk to you. Mm -hmm. All these artists do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, they're all just real people and you treat them with the respect and don't 
be weird and try to get a photo with someone or something. Like I just like, yo, you're just like, we're all the same people. Like we're just doing cool stuff and trying to make music or something that's gonna have impact on people. But uh, I, I think I would love it when they give you respect. You'll have every once in a while you have a bad egg that doesn't care about what's going on in the mm -hmm. room, but they may have had a bad day that day. Right. You know, you never know what's going on with people. Yeah, we all do once in a while. So what what's the next project that you have going? What what do you what, what plans do you have and what would you like to do? Are there things you, obviously yeah. many things you haven't accomplished yet that you want to accomplish yet? There's, uh, I don't know, I've always just been kind of going with the flow mm -hmm. and seeing what happens. I, I mean, Black Window Cream is growing. We got a whole, we're building a complete new community right now, which is that's, that's like a pretty exclusive thing for the kid <laughs> WWL audience. We're building a whole new platform. We're gonna ramp it up. I wanna bring okay. commu live community events together. Um, for projects, I'm, I'm constantly cooking up different types of material and directing a lot more. I'm um, going to go back and direct something for EA Sports when I get back to LA next week. So doing all the pre-pro for that while I'm in town here, which trying to balance that and family time, hanging out with my nephew. But uh, mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, every, every day something new comes on your plate. Someone's calling, they need a solution, and I seem to be like the middleman to everything. So it's been cool. Your dad said something. I've known your dad, Pat Haggerty, a retired Blackhawk County Sheriff's deputy for many years. And he said something to you which has stuck with you for a long time, and that is... I believe the quote is, don't sell yourself, sell yourself short, short yep. right? Yeah. yeah, he sells that to me all the time. Mm -hmm. And I, I, as soon as like, I started to get clients that could pay me, uh, you know, you get a lot of people that don't pay you when mm -hmm. you move out. To, they, a lot of people can take advantage of situations. They understand you're just, you need the opportunity more than the money. Um, and so every time he'd always be like, eh, you know, don't sell yourself short. Make sure you do it. Like, try to, try to ask for what you deserve. And it's true, like I think I was, there's so many things that you have to do where you either intern, you're taking, you know, you need all the knowledge, we need to soak mm -hmm. it up as much as possible. But at a certain point you can, you earn that respect and you need to start acquiring it. Uh, Hollywood's a different world. Like, you know, so many people are broke in Hollywood and doing the, you know, there's actors and actresses that are waiting tables and doing mm -hmm. everything they can because you just have to try to get your opportunities. But um, it's true, like why, you know, at a certain point, once you've developed the time, you took the time to develop your skill set, you earn that and you shouldn't sell yourself short. I'm all about it. So say yes till you can say no. In my opinion, you have to say no to some jobs at a certain point if they don't respect like your value. Sometimes it'll pay off, sometimes it won't. But when it does... And again, big thank you to Ben Haggerty making some great videos with some of the biggest entertainers out there in Hollywood. That's it for this week. A reminder, all of our shows are online on kww.com. Just go over to the home page there, find the Watch tab, head on down to the Steel Report, and there you'll find all of our recent programs. We'll see you next week on the next edition of The Steel Report.